about the U.S. economy. Lynn Paramore is on the show. Lynn is a senior researcher analyst at the Institute for New Economic Thinking. In a piece for Vice, Lynn profiled a man who is building luxury bomb shelters for paranoid one percenters. Aaron first asked her to describe what luxury prepping really looks like and what it says about the state of our society. Here's what she had to say. Well, it's a fascinating thing. I haven't often gone underground, literally, to do a story. Uh, but in this case, you know, I've been interested in the prepper phenomenon for a while. Uh, you know, you hear about guys hoarding cans of beans in their garage and so on. But I began to hear um, the World Economic Forum meetings in Davos that there were some whisperings in the corridors about very wealthy people buying airstrips in New Zealand and uh, preparing for all kinds of disaster scenarios. So I, I got interested interested and started doing research and I found a guy Robert Vicino who is the CEO of a company called Vivos and he builds these luxurious underground shelters uh, they uh, the one that I visited in Indiana is in a former Cold War uh, communications facility and it's nuclear blast proof you go underground and it feels like you're in a very nice hotel I mean there's pillow top mattresses on the bunk beds and there's uh, you know a, a luxury kitchen there's a there's an uh, a, a studio Studio where you can watch movies on a big screen TV. You know, it's, it's not the kind of hideout that you imagine. Uh, and and this is for wealthy people who are concerned about various disaster scenarios. But a common theme among them is a fear of civil unrest, uh, a fear of an uprising from the 99 percent. Wow, that's really interesting. And and this is kind of just fluff. But what does this run the one percenters that feel this is so imperative to have? Roughly, cost-wise, what are we looking oh, at? Oh, you know, there's, there's a range. Uh, you, you have your sort of $35,000 version on up to a facility that uh, this company, Vivos, has just launched in Germany that will run you 2 to $3 million for a place. And, and they have enough fuel and food supplies, so I'm told, to keep things going for about a year, maybe even more. So while all hell is breaking loose on the surface. Only for a year, though. If it's, if it's breaking loose for 18 months, sorry. <laughs> it's, it, it, exactly. And it, it is a strange thing to me, culturally, because inequality is obviously a problem, and this is part of a realization on the part of wealthy people that it's a problem. But the idea that the solution to that is to hide away in a gold-plated bunker while everything else goes to hell, I don't believe that people can survive that way. I think we all need each other, and it's kind of a, it's a strain of libertarianism that puts emphasis on the individual and doesn't trust the government to do anything right, right in the case of a disaster. So I think that's feeding into this, and a little paranoia is feeding into it. I would be much more happy if some of these wealthy people would say, hey, maybe I don't need all these tax breaks. Maybe I want to do something to actually solve the problem of inequality rather than hide away from it. It's a good point, and also it doesn't make you necessarily hate the guy who's developing this. He saw a void in the marketplace, and That's he's right. filling it. And frankly, there's something ingenious about the fact that, okay, if the apocalypse, apocalypse or something close to it has arrived, I would imagine the legal foot on which you could stand to sue someone <laughs> post-apocalypse or, or I, I don't know, you know, the, the day of reckoning. Yeah. It's just incredible it, to me. True. It seems illogical for otherwise logical people. Yeah, you know? it's true. And uh, it, in a way, you know, you could argue that it's a good thing. Well, they're spending their money on something and it's employing people who are doing the building and, uh, you know, maintaining these facilities. Okay, maybe the wealthy have run out of things to spend their money on. They've got so much of it. Right. So yeah. there's that issue too. Um, but it does strike me as uh, th there's a lot of fantasy involved. There was a couple that I read about out in California who thought, well, if everyone dies, we could be the new Adam and Eve. And I guess this time Adam and Eve would be wearing Rolex watches, you know. But, but that but kind no. of hubris. <laughs> no, <laughs> please, no. <laughs> Sounds like a really bad science fiction movie. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. We're good. <laughs> it's, it's incredible stuff.